Hey everyone, it's Effie. I'm back with another card using our Daisy Duet stamp set. So this set features a large image of two daisies uh, that are really fun to color. So I'm starting off by embossing this onto some watercolor paper. I'll be using our rose gold embossing powder. The watercolor paper that I'm using is Canson XL 140 pound watercolor paper. It's fairly inexpensive if you buy the pad and you can just cut them up into panels. After I see the image with Versamark ink, I just spooned on our rose gold embossing powder and then melted all of the powder with my heat tool. Now I'm just going to squeeze some watercolors into my uh, floral watercolor palette. For my paints, I'm using my Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant liquid watercolors. Everything that I'm using comes from the set A. So I'm using persimmon, alpine rose, lemon yellow, and grass green. And I also add a, a blue later on. So I just shook up the bottles before I squeezed the paints into my palette just to make sure that they're uh, nicely mixed. I'll be doing some wet on wet watercoloring today. This is a favorite technique that I use to get a nice blend of my colors. So I start off by wetting the area that I wanna paint first with some clean water, and then I add in my pigments. So I start off by adding in the persimmon paint. After I blend that color out just a little bit, I go in and I add a bit of the alpine rose, but I don't cover the persimmon with the alpine rose because I want to get a nice two-tone look. So you want to make sure that you get some nice coverage with your first color and then you just add a little bit of contrast with your second color. I'm using two fine tip Pentel aqua brushes to paint today. Uh, if you don't have these water brushes, you can use any fine tip paintbrush that you have. But I do like using the aqua brushes because they have the water chamber and I can just squeeze the pen if I need any extra water. So it's really convenient. And that's why I use these rather than the traditional paintbrush. When you're wetting the area that you wanna paint first, you wanna make sure that the paper is slightly saturated, but you don't wanna oversaturate it. So if the water is kind of rolling off your paper, you've added too much water. So make sure that um, you just add a little bit of water. If you get too much water on it, you can dab off the excess moisture with a clean paper towel. When you're painting florals, to get a more realistic look, you want to make sure that the inner portions of your petals are a bit darker. This way you get that illusion of depth. And for any petals that are behind the petals in the forefront of your image, you want to make sure that you get a bit more shading into the inner portions of those petals that are in the rear of your image. So another reason why I'm using two colors today is because the Alpine Rose gives me a nice darker shade. So basically I use the Alpine Rose to give me that bit of contrast that I need to get that interest in my painting today. Usually when I watercolor, I like to leave a little bit of light or white space. So as I pull my color or pigment from the inner portions of the petal, I don't pull that color all the way up to the edge. I always leave a little bit of white space or light space in my petals. This way I have a nice range of colors in each petal. And so I'm just using two colors to paint both of my daisies. And I'm gonna paint the second daisy the same way that I painted the first daisy. I encourage you to experiment with different colors when you're watercoloring. So you don't have to use the same exact colors that I'm using. So you can, right now I'm using kind of a coral color with a pink, but other nice combinations of colors are reds and yellows or uh, reds and oranges yellows and reds, and that way you get an additional color of orange because when you mix the yellow and red, you get orange. I also encourage you to try using a cool color palette because right now I'm using a nice warm color palette. So you can go crazy and paint some blue or purple daisies that are really, really pretty. Uh, I have another video where I painted my daisies blue and the leaves were gray and that uh, came out really, really nicely because the colors were unique to daisies. 
So as I'm painting, I am using two fine tip brushes to paint. I use one brush to apply the pigment to the paper and I use the second brush to apply the clean water to the paper and to blend the color out. So I switch off between using the two brushes. This makes it easier to paint and it just makes the whole painting process faster uh, instead of using one brush for both painting and blending. And as you can see, my hand goes off screen from time to time and that's just me wiping my brush tip off on a paper towel uh, that's off camera because I will wipe off that second brush that I use that I like to keep clean for applying clean water and for blending uh, the colors out. So I also use the paper towel to dab off my brush tip to help me control the amount of moisture that's on my brush tip. Now as I'm painting the leaves, I'm using the same wet on wet watercolor technique. So I wet the leafy area with clean water first and then I added my green and then I added a little bit of yellow and I blended the two together. I added a bit more shading to the areas of the leaves that are closer to the florals or the areas that are right underneath. I'm not going to go into too much about uh, light theory or you know, direction of light, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the areas that of the leaves that are under the daisies should be a little bit darker uh, because uh, the shadow of the leaves will make the image appear a bit more realistic. So instead of adding a darker green for my shading, I'm going to add some blue, and this is going to give me a really nice depth of color because instead of having a leaf that is just all totally green. I have a little bit of green, I have a little bit of yellow, and that little bit of blue is going to add some interest. As I paint, I'm not taking too much care to blend all the colors together because I do like a little bit of the hard edges showing up as we go from color to color. And this is just going to add a little bit of interest. When you have a smooth blend of color, um, it's, it's a stylistic preference actually and originally I used to like that kind of style but I've been um, kind of going in more kind of like a hard edgy direction with my painting um, and I like the texture uh, that this type of painting gives when you don't blend everything totally together you have a bit more texture and a bit more interest. So I just painted all of my leaves the same way once I finish painting the leaves, I actually go back to paint the centers of the daisies and you can kind of paint these um, any color you want. I just chose the persimmon watercolor paint that's already on my palette. So I set the panel aside to dry completely and then I'm going to die cut this beautiful image using the coordinating die. Next, I'm going to take our new Geometric Circles cover plate die. This cover plate die does not cut out the edge. It'll just cut out on the inside of an A2 size panel. So it does leave a little bit of a border, but you need to make sure that the cover plate die is centered on your panel. And this cover plate die is really great because you don't have that outer cut line, so you can use it on a larger panel. It doesn't have to be an A2 size panel. After I popped out all the bits and pieces, I adhered that die cut piece onto a top folding A2 card base and then I popped up my daisy image right onto the base. Then I stamped this let's catch up sentiment from our basic label set. I stamped it in our noir die ink and then I fussy cut the label and just popped it up onto my card. Lastly, I embellished my card using our clear rhinestones which have a nice faceted edge. Since these are crystal clear rhinestones, they take on whatever color you adhere them onto. So they do look like beautiful little dewdrops. So my card is not complete. I hope you guys enjoyed today's project and video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.